Welcome all. Today we are going to have a discussion on construction project management, which is the final year civil engineering subject. I am Dr. Rohan Nalaude, Associate Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, KIT's College of Engineering. The first unit of this particular subject is dedicated to basics of construction project. Before going to the construction project, one should always understand what is the meaning of project and what are the various phases that are leading it to be a project that means phases of a project so lesson one is dedicated to a project and what are the various objectives of the project and the phases or the stages involved in the project so we will go ahead with this lesson one today you can see in this particular slide there is a meaning definition of a project what is a project project is a set of interrelated tasks means in a project, we have to identify the various tasks or various steps that needs to be followed unless and until these tasks are interrelated to each other, we cannot consider it as a project. There might be a thing that you will say that uh, uh, whether any particular process can be considered as a project, the answer will be no. A project has to have some following four objectives and unless and until these four objectives are met, we cannot consider it to be a project. Because a process cannot be have an objectives, process are different things, the process will have a, a repetitive task associated with it, but in a project every task can be considered as a unique task, because every task has some different objectives, different start and finish time, different cost associated with it, means whatever things that you can see in this particular slide that are objectives, then you have start and finish time then you have cost and then you have the performance requirement so these four characteristics or the four criteria that will separate out the process from the project okay so a project has to have some objective so project has to have some start and finish time a cost has to be constrained and unless you work in that particular constraint you cannot consider it as a project and performance requirements are totally related to the quality of output that we are expecting from that project okay resources again the specified resources you may have some specialized resources de deployed for that particular project or particular task then then and then only that has to be defined at the initial stage itself of a project so these four five things that will decide the project understanding and it's going to separate out the process from the project okay i hope you have understood what exactly is the meaning of project and how processes are different than the project okay for example if i have to give how project is different than the process a manufacturing of a e-vehicle so electric vehicle construction of a Sagar setu like the that we had in the trans harbor link in mumbai which is considered as a project but the process is the joining of various peers, joining of various uh, um, decks in that particular project, the compilation or the uh, separation or the manufacturing of various parts of e-vehicles. These are will be considered as the processes, while a project is the total project of construction of a bridge or uh, manufacturing of a e-vehicle or whatever manufacturing product will be there. So processes can be a part of a project, but processes only cannot be considered as a project okay so this is the uh, definition of a project which is always identified or which is always nominated through its objective start and finish time cost and the performance requirements okay again uh, when i say the project management it is uh, always the definition that we have seen earlier the scope and the time and the cost the management will be just managing all the resources which we are going to involve in the execution of the project execution of the project doesn't mean that we should always focus on the manufacturing part we should always focus on the construction park or product development stage we have to take care of the life cycle of the project which will start from the concept stage and its operation maintenance fill level okay so all these stages involved in that particular project the project management is involved in all the stages and projects that we are going to see in the next few slides so as i said the project management has to take care of scope of the work that will be deployed to various contractors and the stakeholders the time allotted for every 
task that we are defining within that project the management is the thing the management involves uh, this type of activities the cost associated with each every task and every resources that we are deploying that is again governed by the project management the quality and the performance parameters that we are talking about okay so for example in case of uh, construction project of a commercial building the quality can be the type of uh, output or uh, the type of air quality we are expecting when a occupier is going to enjoy that particular commercial facility or the uh, type of finishes like uh, how much amount of uh, uh, comfort that a particular consumer is going to achieve or he is going to use within that particular premises that can be considered as the quality aspect of the project management again quality and performance can be considered as a core in the project management and that will be supplemented by cost time and the project scope so our focus has to be always on the quality and the performance of the particular project that is performance parameters and then rest of the constraints will come later on like time cost and the persons who are going to achieve the various project scopes or the entities who are going to achieve the uh, work on that project scope okay then management has also take has to take care of various stakeholders within the different needs of the ex and their expectation okay so uh, if i consider uh, what are the various stakeholders the landowner if i again go with the example of construction of a commercial building in a particular heart of the city then the landowner can be considered as one of the stakeholders the other stakeholders can be uh, like um, promoter who has devised the uh, proposal to that landowner who is going to invest in that particular proposal uh, then uh, government agencies can be a stakeholder who is going to give the uh, permissions and sanctions to execute that project then the consumers who are going to book that facility for their use that can be considered stakeholders then then the contractors who are going to execute that project work that can be considered as one of the stakeholders so stakeholders are many and there might be a uh, chance that there might so stakeholders are changing throughout the various phases of the project like in case of uh, handing over stage or operation maintenance stage the consumer one can uh, sell that particular premise to other consumer too so stakeholders are changing continuously so as a project management team we have to take care of all these needs and expectation of that all these stakeholders like whether the contractors are in a position to construct that type of a facility within that city so that feasibility has to be taken care by the project management team whether any type of uh, high end technology digital interventions are possible within that project is not that has to be taken care by the project management team so based on the constraints and the location specific uh, things we have to involve the various stakeholders within the project management okay so uh, the first task of the project management is to define the scope define the time constraint define the quality and the cost aspect and after that he has to also take care of the needs and expectations of various stakeholders which will be involved in the life cycle of the project not just only the construction phase of the project okay and now onwards we are going to see the various requirements and the various phases of the project here you can also see there might be a identified requirements and second is unidentified requirements or expectations okay unidentified requirements you cannot expect it like from consumer one or consumer two consumer one has sailed one of the office to the consumer two we cannot consider the requirement that are there from the consumer two which is going to occupy the space five years down the line on the handing over stage so unidentified means as a project management we also have to think about if that particular consumer is not in a position to occupy the space not in position to take the advantage of infrastructure and the services that we have provided within that commercial building facility then consumer 2 is going to how that consumer 2 is going to rectify all these things and that uh, point of view we have to check the future scope and the expansion requirement of that particular promoter also okay the changes that may be expecting within that particular project also needs to be taken care so the future scope will be considered as the unidentified requirements and that has to be also identified at the 
by the project management who is going to govern the project management on that particular project okay so we till now what we have seen is what is meaning of the project and what are the scope and the duties of project management team now this project as i said project management is just not only related to the execution part project management starts from the various phases of the project now we are going to see the various phases of the project here you can see there is a graph one is a y axis there is a x axis x axis is going to represent the timeline and the life cycle of the project while y axis is going to represent the level of efforts which are put by the project management people or the project management or the stakeholders of the project okay so you can see project efforts are there and he this is the graph that is represented throughout the life cycle of the project here you can see at the the overview of this graph before going into the details of various stages of the project you can see over here the, at the initial part of the project the level of efforts are very less means at the initial conceptual levels we are not putting any cost at the sanctioning level we are not putting the majority of efforts but the efforts will be higher at the implementation stage and it will get dropped down at the closing stages of the project okay now we'll see what can be the various stages there are basically four stages of project management that we are going to see and that each stage will be having some task associated with it that is going to be represented by the text which is below that particular phase of the project so this is the phase first phase that is proposal phase and in this proposal phase of the project there are three to four tasks that has to be a part of proposal stage only we cannot deviate the task to other stages of the project and based on the task and the level of efforts you can see the proposal stage the level of efforts are very 10 to 15 percent of the total effort that we, we may be expecting at the peak of that particular graph okay so proposal stage first we'll start with the concept the concept may be by the promoter of that project or the builder or the con who has uh, involved in the total creation of that particular building at the concept level he will put his concept to that landowner and landowner and the promoter or the builder will devise the concept they will develop some definitions like what type of facility that needs to be created within that commercial space whether i should go for a hotel whether i should go for some shops commercial showrooms whether i should go for some warehouses whether I should go for some hotels or some other type of commercial offices, these will come under the development and definition stage. So concept stage will be always followed by the definition that will be a part of your proposal. Then uh, we have to check the feasibility of that particular definition and development of uh, phase. Means whether in terms of economical feasibility or technical feasibility or the, from the market point of view what type of evaluation that can be possible so all the market research all the requirement in that area what can be who can be our proposed customers to that particular project these all things will be covered in the evaluation stage of the project so proposal stage will end over here with the finalization of the final evaluation and then this will be authorized by the owner and the promoter of the project. So authorization means finalization of the things at the evaluation stage. Means we have authorized that this promoter or the builder is going to do that work and the like in case of if landowner is not in a position to invest in that particular so, so he will have some uh, joint venture with the uh, promoter and builder and both will have some uh, share distribution within them and based on that that legal framework of share distribution then uh, sharing the rights to that uh, promoter and builder will be a part of your authorization then after proposal stage uh, the authorization is done between the landowner and the commercial building builders and developers and promoters then both will sit together and they will plan the things okay so here the level of efforts have been increased because at the planning stage they are going to involve architects they are going to involve the technical person who will decide they will be going to involve the corporation or the municipal town planners also to check the various 
possibilities within that particular premise how much amount of floor space index how much amount of built up area is possible within that place that all things will comes into the planning stage that's why the level of efforts have been increased slightly than the proposal stage of the project you can see the scope will be defined in the planning based on the type of occupancy that can be possible within that phase then comes the schedule which is very important part and uh, unless and until you do it in the planning level uh, it's very difficult to complete the project on a particular time scale okay the so schedules means an overview overall schedule in start of the project when i'm going to complete my ground floor when i'm going to complete my first floor when i'm going to start selling my ground floor shops when i'm going to give uh, hand over the first floor to my consumers all this will be a scope of schedule okay so this will be a master schedule not the detailed schedule that we are expecting in the implementation stage okay then based on the schedule budget is going to have an impact okay so budget this budget is a tentative estimate that we are uh, how much amount of investment is expected within that particular project suppose now as i said schedule is going to have an impact on the budget means if i have to complete the work in the 6 month and if i have to complete the work in one year both will have some different budget associated with it okay if i have to complete the work in fast track then we have to invest more so the budget requirement will be on the higher side if you have to complete the task as and when the booking is going to happen when the selling agreements will be happening and based on the selling the budget will get drop down because you are going to get money at the initial investment from the consumer itself okay so budget and schedules are very interrelated to each other again the schedule and budget budget means it's a tentative budget it's not a detailed budget so based on the budget that we have decided for that particular phase of the project that is planning stage how much amount of resources that needs to be deployed that will be defined in the planning stage like whether i should go for only civil contractors whether i should go for some turnkey contractors or whether i should go for independent contractors like civil electrical mechanical plumbing or any green building consultant if it if they are required all this decision about the resources that will be happening at the planning level itself okay and this will be followed by the complete formation of the organization their scopes will be defined to each other which organization will be doing which type of activity all things will be done at the planning level so planning level is very crucial in terms of the um, sanctioning of the work okay and after completing the planning after doing the journey from the scope to organization we are going to put this plan and proposed to the municipal authorities or the sanctioning government authorities so this planning stage will end with the sanction of the total work that we are proposing by the local bodies or jurisdictions then comes here the implementation stage of the project or the phase of the project where maximum efforts will be involved here you can see the level of efforts is almost twice or 2.5 times the level of efforts which were put in the planning stage okay means all the stakeholders all the contractors all the budgetary provisions all the resources that we have think about in proposal and planning stage they will be in action mode so we have to spend amount we have to assign the resources uh, we have to do the procurement of materials procurement of uh, vendors everything will be happening in the implementation stage that's why the timeline of the project you can see if this total stretch is of one year if this total timeline is of one year if i consider this total stretch is of one year then around about after authorization sanctioning majority of work and majority of this particular task will be around 40% means after completing the basic 2 to 3 months of sanctioning process we are going to implement the project for the next 4 to 5 months okay and closing will be happening for 1 month in this way we can divide the total uh stages of the project in terms of timeline okay so in this implementation stage we will be doing the detail engineering and design that means whether the whatever things that we have planned 
we have to go into the detail engineering and design of that particular plan means here we are going to have a concrete design rcc design steel design detailed estimate whatever estimate that we have prepared at the planning level they are just budgetary estimates okay a detailed estimate how much amount of quantities of various materials will be consumed on my site of the project that will be defined in the implementations at the initial level of the project okay that will be followed by the most important a stage of the task of the project that is termed as the procurement what is mean by procurement is equivalent to tendering and allocation of work to the uh, the most competent person or the most competent body or the organization and unless and until we do this procurement at very efficient level we cannot expect the success of the project so procurement is considered to be the most important stage of the project where the success is uh, totally relying okay the procurement means assigning the work to various uh, contractors and getting the st start of the work after the procurement is your actual manufacturing and construction in the implementation stage that will be followed by trials and commissioning of various systems that we have uh, established in the project like in case of air conditioning and systems then trial has to be done in case of lift as installation that commissioning has to be done in case of electrical fittings we need to check the trials and commissioning in case of plumbing services whether the desired pressure of uh, water pressure is achieved at various tap level is not that will be checked in the trial and commissioning level so that will end my implementation stage of the project that will be just my then we'll start with the handing over to my client or the consumers of that particular project again i am giving you an example of a construction project because we are uh, starting with the subject of construction project these all stages will apply to the any type of engineering project maybe a software development it may be a manufacturing process everything will be as it is like from proposal planning implementation closing agreement these four stages will be applicable to to general project okay then comes the documentation part in closing phase where we will be giving all the closing documentation like uh, st structural stability certificates the municipal uh, project completion certificate from the municipal town planning authorities that will be a part of documentation then whatever uh, guarantees and warranties that we have taken out from the material suppliers that will be handed over to the customers or clients then snag list look in case of procurement stage we always keep some amount 2% of amount as a security deposit from the contractors okay this secured deposits will be handed over to the contractor after completion of snag list and the failure analysis has been performed on that particular project or the various components of the project for example there might be a chance that you have completed the project in the summer season and uh, in the rainy season you found and you observe some leakages happening in the project so that will be uh, noted as a snag point and that will be listed down and that work will be rectified by As assigning that work to the concerned contractors, and then after completing this snag list and failure analysis, uh, that uh, secured deposit amount will be handed over to the contractor, returned back to the contractors. So this will be a part of your closing part. So why I am telling you this? Because most of the uh, engineers thinks that construction project management is only involved with this part, that is implementation part. This is not the case. as a construction project management team we have to consider all these parts all the phases of the project from the proposal to the closing stage of the project okay so unless if just concentrate on this part uh, the efforts which are we have put on this part will be totally neglected and there might be a chance that you will lose some quality parameters aspects of that project also okay so we have to take care of all these phases of the project and then the total project is handed over to the facility management team that will take care of all the facilities throughout the use period of that particular project that may be 20 years 10 years 15 years whatever the timeline for which that project is designed okay so this will summarize the total stages of the project uh, one more point that i would like to highlight over here uh, this is the conventional way to look at the project phases but nowadays because of the technological interventions the digital technologies and creation of digital twins what is happening in the construction projects are uh, the efforts put in the initial stage of the projects are very high and because of that 
this is the new type of uh, project efforts line that is been nowadays implemented like effort put at the design level are very high the consultants involved in this particular because we need to drop down because because of this particular efforts put on the implementation stage uh, what is happening there might be a chance that uh, delays are happening uh, the cost is getting escalated uh, the prices may change and that may get uh, impact on the project delivery timely delivery of the project so to avoid this we have to take care of all these things at from the concept level itself and because of the digital project delivery uh, that is maybe happening from uh, technology like building information modeling beam uh, we are in a position to in involve all the stakeholders of the project from the proposal planning de de designing stage itself okay so this is the new advancement which is happening throughout the life cycle of the project that's why project has to be thought in the total perspective okay so this is about the stages of the project as the first lesson of this particular unit basics of construction project now in the next session we will see the characteristics of a construction project and how the work breakdown structure is happening on a construction project okay so this is for this session thank you very much